Hello folks. Welcome back to the Mountain State, West Virginia. If you're wondering where we are right now, well, right now I am under a covered bridge. This is one of those types of bridges you don't see that often, which were built way back yonder in the past. And last time we went to one of these covered bridges, we were in New England, where you can see the most of them. And I found it a bit odd that a state like West Virginia has a covered bridge. But then I also thought, like, this state is very, very rural, so it might make sense that back in the day, people had these sort of building techniques to build a bridge across maybe a stream or a creek like this. But yeah, welcome back to West Virginia. I'm excited that we get to go back to West Virginia on this Appalachian adventure trip. Remember, West Virginia is neither northern nor southern culturally. Nor is it east coast or midwest, it's just its own odd little thing, West Virginia. Being the only state engulfed completely within a mountain range, it makes sense. West Virginia's culture is just so isolated from the other states bordering it. Now, why do I bring this up right now? Well, I think it's important to get a refresher because we're gonna be in West Virginia for quite a few days. And to soak as much culture of West Virginia as we can, it's good to know that West Virginia is really its own thing. I am so excited that we get to explore West Virginia once again because in the last few times we went to West Virginia, we really only went to these outside perimeters on the very edge of the state. First we went to Harper's Ferry. That was basically the easternmost point of West Virginia. So it wasn't really West Virginia even though it was in the state. And then we went to Wheeling which was basically on that northern panhandle. It was essentially either rural Ohio or rural Pennsylvania however you want to see it. And then we went to New Vrindavan which was its own thing. It didn't feel like America even. Now we are here and finally we get to explore a location that really feels like the core, the heart of West Virginia's culture. Welcome to Fairmont, West Virginia. This ahead of us, this bridge we were walking through, this is called the Barrickville Covered Bridge. And we are technically not in Fairmont, we're in a town called Barrickville, but it's so close to Fairmont, decided to count it within the area. So we're not cheating here on the coverage project, we're just going to the area of Fairmont. Now compared to the states around it and the United States as a whole, yes, West Virginia is a relatively small state, but that doesn't mean it has its own distinct regions of its own. We are right here in the Mountaineer country, as they call it, the north central part of the state. And compared to the two panhandles we visited prior in our experience with West Virginia, you can find that this area is much more mountainous, as the name goes, Mountaineer country. We are really at the heart of West Virginia. So I actually didn't realize we are actually walking on a bridge. So there's this stream over there, and it's a pretty steep drop, so I don't wanna be careless and fall down there. That'll ruin the day. But now that we've introduced ourselves to the grand old state of West Virginia again, let's visit downtown Fairmont. Let me ask, how much is one pepperoni roll? How much is this? A dollar sixty. Yes. Can I take three? Three? Yep. Yes. And that's all you want is three pepperoni rolls? Yeah. Okay. Originated here. Yeah, coal miners. This, yeah, this is where it originated. This is where it originated. They don't. A lot of states don't. Other states even have it. I see. Like Virginia yeah, doesn't have it. The Carolinas don't have it. This is like, just a real regional it. food here. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Well, yeah. Central West Virginia. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, good. Good really thing good. I stopped by then. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people will stuff them with cheese and peppers, buy some peppers, and then bake them and warm them. And like oh, that. wow. They had to go underground and they couldn't come out of ground to eat lunch. So a lot of their wives would try to find ways to pack them lunches that would be sustaining. I see. And underground because you don't have a way to keep it hot. You don't have a way to keep it cold. Right. Or safe and any of that. So I think it kind of started like that and it just went That's true. wild. I mean, Wonderful. it just went wild. I mean, yeah, more like the, it is, you find, you know, they start to get out there a little bit, but right here in north central West Virginia, there's like five bakeries. They do pepperoni rolls, but other than that, you know, you're hard pressed to find them anywhere else. Yeah, and I'd love to find the places that make the authentic ones. Yeah, and it's us. Yeah. This is where they came from, man. Wonderful. I wanted to take a little bit of a detour before we went into the real city. I was getting a bit hungry and I 
heard some things about how West Virginians, they love the pepperoni roll, and this is the place to get it. The Country Club Bakery right here in Fairmont. And you heard the story from them, how it started with the miners and everything, and now it's sort of like a tradition to get a pepperoni roll if you are visiting West Virginia. So without further ado, I'm gonna see what it is like. I bought three, but I guess for <laughs> the video's sake, I'll just try this one. Without further ado, let's try the pepperoni roll, only found in West Virginia. Let me tell you all, I can see why all the miners of West Virginia here loved the pepperoni roll. It packed a punch. It had your meat, but then it also had the carbs in the roll. Yeah, if you ever visit West Virginia, go try yourself a pepperoni roll. You will not regret it. Man, I am stuffed. Just like those pepperoni rolls were stuffed with pepperoni. But yeah, forget eating some gourmet meal. Why not have the true meal of Appalachia, a pepperoni roll? But anyway, we are now in the noisy downtown. Um, it's very noisy with all the trucks and cars going by, but you could also see all these buildings. For one, that's the courthouse of the county we're in. So you see a, a fun mix of traditional red brick buildings, and then you see these industrial art deco buildings. To be honest, that's kind of what you would expect here in rural Appalachia. It looks, you know, good, but it doesn't look huge with skyscrapers made of glass. You see mainly buildings from at least a hundred years ago or so being built here. Now this is what one might expect when they think of some Appalachian town. All gloomy, decayed. Everything is a bit dilapidated. And yes, that can be said to some extent, but you can also see this type of stuff anywhere else in the country. There's gonna be good parts of town, bad parts of town. From this bridge, we take a grand look at Fairmont. Sure, there's cars coming at me, going this way, going that way on this bridge, and it's noisy, but we get this beautiful sight. From this distance, the little town looks so beautiful. It's a shining example of one of those hidden Appalachian towns nestled in the mountains. Over on this side, we have the Monongahela River. We visited this river in Pittsburgh when it was at that confluence of this Monongahela River and the Allegheny River. So here we are upstream seeing a different part of this river as it flows down from the Appalachian Mountains and will eventually go into the state of Pennsylvania. One moment it's raining and then it's sunny. Look at that. Unbelievable. And then up here in these mountains, the weather really is dictated by where you are relative to the mountains. So on one side it could be perfectly sunny, on the other side it could be a full-on thunderstorm. As mentioned earlier in this video, Fairmont, West Virginia was a huge town for coal mining. Lots of miners would come to this place, in addition to all over West Virginia. I mean the mountains are full of coal, just abundant. But they would come one of these places to Fairmont. Oh, you just know that was a clock over there at one point. Has the shape and everything. I was just about to say, oh, found the Fairmont, West Virginia clock. Sadly, we can't do it because there's no clock there. Instead, there's just some signage. Apparently, Fairmont, West Virginia was so into the coal mining industry that eventually it was only inevitable until problems occurred. In the year of 1907, the Fairmont area was home to one of the worst mining disasters in American history, the Monongah Mine Disaster. Explosion in this Monongah Mine complex killed more than 300 people, probably a lot more because those were only the registered miners. They often brought family and friends to help them along for financial reasons. So many, many, many people were killed in this mining accident. There had to be ventilation for 
the very, very few survivors. The system allowing the miners to breathe pure oxygen broke down and so the miners were left with mere minutes to escape the mine with all the fumes from the mine wreaking havoc on the air inside. Ultimately, only a very, very, very small amount of miners were able to escape relative to the mass, mass majority of the miners who had perished. Sometimes there are just accidents when you're working in such hazardous conditions. And so right here around the Fairmont area stands one of the worst mine disasters in American history. So here on our final destination of the day, behind us is Fort Prickett. From the looks of it, it's pretty refurbished, reconstructed, but it's also meant to be protected as a cultural reminder of what West Virginia as a state once was. West Virginia was that western frontier of the United States. Originally part of Virginia, it served as that mountainous hinterland that few ventured to explore. In today's time, it's still sort of a frontier land. Not many people live in the state of West Virginia as the surrounding other states, and there's much of West Virginia that remains secluded and isolated from the rest of America's infrastructure. This Fort Prickett was designed to protect the few settlers who dared to venture as west as West Virginia, used primarily in the late 1700s. It was located at this strategic point along that same Monongahela River, which is, I think, over there. As globalized as this world is, as monolithic as this country is starting to become, it's nice to go to a region of the country which is very tucked away, isolated, is doing its own thing, generally left alone and preserved. So yeah, it's very nice to come to one of these small towns. Not the last that we'll be seeing on this Appalachian adventure, which is just peaceful. Not so engulfed by people, but a place of tranquility. But that's all I have for you all. Hope you enjoyed the day here in Fairmont, West Virginia, a small little town that I think deserves a lot more appreciation and coverage. Here we are on the coverage project covering this location. So, I have nothing more to be said. Spend the rest of the hours I have left of daylight right here at Prickett's Fort State Park. Looking at a quite a swampy view of the Monongahela River. More travels to come. I will see you at the next location.